Hi there, I'm Sela Karyat, the writer-director of The Valley. Hi, and I'm Mark Busby from Film Not Limited. And, and I'm on Hellblazer Biz with Chris Gordon. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening and good night wherever you guys are in the world right now. I actually have the honour and the privilege of the company of Sailor Cariat and Mark Busby. Sailor is the director and the writer of The Valley, which is a film which is coming out soon. And Mark is from Film Vault, which is distributing the film as well as many others. So good evening guys, thank you, or good afternoon even for you Sailor, because you're over in LA. Uh, not in LA, you're in California should I say. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate you taking the time out to chat to me today. Thank you for having me. Nice no, to no. see you again, Chris. Yeah, you too, Mark. It's, you're welcome, Sailor. It's, it's an honour and a privilege. And uh, I will, I'll spill this at the beginning. Like I said, I've already spilled it out, but this is going to be an even bigger honour. Hopefully you are, you are coming over in March, are you? Yes, I yeah. am. I'm coming from here. Brilliant. It's going to be on March 2nd at the uh, Soho... Um, theater, Mark, you can uh, fill in the details. <laughs> yeah, so at the moment it's at the Courthouse Hotel where we just recently done um, a, a premiere. But yeah, it's on March the second from around about seven thirty in the evening. Fantastic, and I'm very honoured, and I appreciate everything that the fact that you have allowed me to host the Q and A for this. Um, so you will have to put up with my company for a second time, sailor. <laughs> when we go through this one uh, you probably noticed the giggle as well I got recognised at the um, last premiere from Landscape of Lies by the, the composer LJ, was it LJ? yeah, yeah. he turned around to me and goes I recognise your giggle uh, so it's quite a famous giggle now uh, people who listen <laughs> infectious I've been told but I'm hoping that's in a good way <laughs> excellent yeah. so I do have some questions for you I had the privilege of watching the film last night myself um and like I've mentioned to you before, it I wouldn't say it's hard to say you enjoyed a film when it's the, the, the um you do, but the, the, the obviously with the content of it, it's not an enjoyable film as in a funny laughing film, but you enjoy it because it resonates and it's so well done and so you know um, the the production of the whole the whole production is so tight and so I'm trying to think of the word meaningful. Um, that you can't not get drawn into it, and I think the the subject matter uh, I'm to is something I think which is going to touch everybody. There's I don't think there's anybody in this current world who hasn't been touched by uh, depression or a mental health issues. Uh, Thank you so much. I really appreciate your, what you're saying. Um, you know, I felt a really enormous responsibility writing and directing this movie because. Because of the topic, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, you have, when you're talking about something so um, so heavy as suicide, you know, you have you have a responsibility. Like, you don't know who's in the audience. You know, yeah. it could be somebody who's suffering, someone who's maybe had a family member who's you know succumbed to this. It could be a lay person who doesn't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. So you want to be you want to be very realistic about how you portray it. And you, and you also, you know, you want to be responsible to all that, those different types of audiences. And um, so I had also had that responsibility in mind when I was when I was doing the movie. Um, and I feel like it is. I mean, people have told me counselors have come to talk to me, educators, and they've all told me, "Wow, this is so realistic. This is so you know true to life." Mm -hmm. And I feel like it did come out in a very realistic way. Not in a preachy way, but in, you know, it, it, it makes you feel the emotions of what it's like to go through something like this. Yeah. And yeah. that's what I was trying to do. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's definitely with that stigma. See, I mean, that's what makes that's what it so hard is that on the one hand, you're suffering from the, this disease. It's like anything, like diabetes or, mm -hmm. you know, hypertension or, or any kind of disease. It, it really is a chemical imbalance of the brain. And then on the other hand, you have to deal with all the shame and the stigma and the hiding. And, you know, that adds a layer of, of burden on the already, bur on the burden that you're already carrying. Mm 
because you have the problem. And exactly. The other thing that's really insidious about depression is that people around you don't necessarily recognize it. Mm-hmm. They don't see it. Like, let's say you have a broken arm. Everyone can see, hey, you should, they have an ailment. I need to help them. Yeah. This is a secret ailment. It's, a, it's an ailment where people don't see it for what it is. They don't understand it. Mm-hmm. Especially in the modern world, which is kind of why I, I talk about I, in the movie, it takes place in Silicon Valley because, you know, that's a modern, you know, yeah. setting. Yeah. It's a high, very high pressure, high tech. And I think people are just trying to cope up with life mm-hmm. in the modern world. It's so fast. It's so fast-paced. There's so much work. There's so much emphasis on work and success and money and fame. The so-called success barometers that we have, you know? Yeah. We're just trying to cope day to day. Mm-hmm. And we're, we're not, you know, we don't have necessarily the patience or the kindness or the empathy to deal with these, with with ailments like depression because, you know, it gets in the way of what we're trying to achieve for that day in a way. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a very kind of, uh, it's a kind of an uncompassionate world that we've created for ourselves. It is, and, definitely. And that makes it even harder to address this issue because it, it simply doesn't fit. Exactly, exactly. And with something like that as well, it just... Um, you, you, I've seen, as you mentioned about the broken arm, because I've seen loads of quite a lot of comments going around lately saying, you know, he goes, I wouldn't tell you with a broken arm, I'll just go and fix the tissue, you'll be fine. You know, or just, <laughs> but so why do you say when someone's feeling depressed, I'll go and cheer up, go and just smile, put a smile on your face? You know, it's <laughs> because there is that complete difference in understanding. I think it's getting better, and I think films like yours, and obviously. Um, campaigners and campaigning against you know for that there's a lot of uh, positive campaign out there to bring it and highlight it so I do think it's getting a lot better but it's got a long way to go before it's fully accepted because there are this there is so much a lot about there but a lot of workplaces are now helping out for people who suffer from it um, there's still everything there's a lack of lack of understanding and um that's why movies, in a way, can help because unlike documentaries or books which inform you factually, this makes you actually feel and understand. I mean, one of the, as I was saying, one of the problems with mental health or depression is that people around you don't really recognize it. They don't mm-hmm. understand it. So they don't think, oh, well, this person is behaving this way because they have depression. They just don't understand how they're, why they're behaving that way. Yeah. You know, they think some other thing, you know, or... For example, you know, you say, okay, it's adolescence. Let's say some, particularly in adolescence or young adulthood, which is, you know, the character who, who, who commits suicide mm-hmm. is a young adult, you, you attribute it to something else. Oh, they're going to college, so, you know, they're feeling more pressure or it's a big change in their life, so they're yeah. adjusting. It's hard to really recognize it. And uh, people don't come out and say because they themselves don't recognize it a lot of the time. Yeah, and So, exactly. you know becomes such a complicated issue and it's kind of that things of, of lack of understanding and complexity and the emotional burden is what I'm trying to capture in the movie you know and the real difficult task is it's a movie it's not it, we're, it's not meant to it's not meant to just educate people it's meant to be engaging and be interesting you know at the end of the day it's a movie right so exactly so I try to achieve all of those objectives which was Really, and um, we did it. Well, say from my point of view, it it worked because, and I think it is a great medium to portray something like this because, as you say, the books on it they're probably about that thick, uh, and they can be filled with a lot of um, techno babble that you know (laughs) you you can just if you just read and read and read and plow through it, it can be hard to digest. So seeing it acted out in such a in, in such a way in such a great way. Uh, like I said with myself with things that I've been through things that I know friends have gone through I could see points in the film quite a few points I was like that rings a bell because yes like she couldn't talk to her parents about it for example there were other you know issues in there which I'm not going to spoil the movie so there were were other things in there which just they sprang out and it was like yes I I, I recognise that Um, and it all comes together and it, it, it 
does bring it out and it's one of the things I actually wrote down here was the fact that I was really impressed with the way you managed to express how depression and mental health issues can affect all types of people on all sides of it whether they're actually the ones suffering or whether they're the people who are actually dealing with those who suffer from it um, so the, the question leading from that was actually how did you research did you, did you have any personal experience yourself from it through to get into research for the film I mean, my actual brother uh, suffered from schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. And um, he was a very vibrant, kind of dynamic individual till he hit about 17, 18, which is typically the age when schizophrenia afflicts people. And he, he completely started changing. His behavior changed. His, you know, he started um, doing very odd things and hearing voices and, you know. And we didn't know what to make of it. And p part of the reason, when I first wrote this script, people said, um, you know, take out the ethnic component mm -hmm. because it'll appeal to a wider array of audiences. But I felt one of the things I think with ethnic Asians particularly is the stigma of talking about it is even worse than it is in Western amongst typical you know, Westerners. Yeah. You know, like I've had friends who've talked about things you know, either depression or anxiety or whatever about their children or themselves, mm -hmm. Asian would never say that. I mean, you would never admit, you know, yeah. that, oh, my God, you know, either my friend or my child or myself ever suffered from this. It's a total taboo topic. So, you know, with my brother, that was part of the problem. I mean, he, the fact that he was suffering, I mean, and it was so hidden. It was all secret. Like, none of our friends knew, nobody, you know. It was all like kept like a deep, dark secret. Mm -hmm. like, and it made it all the more worse because, you know, seeking help, seeking treatment, all this stuff became even more complicated. And, yeah. you know, it was so I've seen it up close and personal. Let's put it that way. Not depression, but very similar. And I've seen depression in my extended family. Okay. So, it so yeah, that kind of helped you be able to draw from that. And again, another comment I did make was the fact that obviously be the stories about the Asian family there, and I know from seeing out on Twitter the um, the posts that you you know you've been doing under the valley about the fact that, and I think you're right with the, I think the culture of Asian culture is um, to put on a f no it sounds awful to put on a face and make sure like you say hide away anything that might be bad. I, you know, and I don't mean that disrespectfully, but it's just like you've just said. It's you, like it's it's the whole culture. You can't be sure you can't be seen to have anything like that. Anyone who's you know might not be feeling or might be depressed or like you say schizophrenia. It's not something that gets in a cultural society to be put out like that. So I, I can very much draw drew on that area as well. So how does that find in America? Obviously, so it's probably even more of a. Um, a thing in America, I guess, than over here, because I know over. I think I'm very ignorant in the um, <laughs> in the in how in the in population sizes. Obviously, I know in the Britain we have very multicultural like that, and of and large Asian populations, so which are integrated. But in America, I, I I wouldn't know how difficult, more difficult that would be, or would it be? I mean, I think it's. Super, I, mean, I don't know the English culture as well, but I think the issues are very similar. The Indians tend to be a smaller percentage of the population here than they are in the UK. Mm -hmm. So it's roughly two to three percent. But there are certain pockets like Silicon Valley, which is you know very high tech, a lot of engineers. I mean, a huge amount number of. So the population is far more diverse here than anywhere else. Yeah. Probably New York City is the only other area you'd find a population like this. And uh, that's one of the reasons I said it in Silicon Valley, because one thing I want to show is that this, these things, these issues afflict all demographics. Mm -hmm. I mean, this family that's very affluent, supposedly successful, and, you know, they have the issue. And uh, I think that the pressure to appear perfect is more here than it is in other parts. I mean, if you live in Ohio, I don't think you have as much pressure to appear successful, so-called successful. Yeah. And it kind of draws to question, what is success? Because, you know, having a peace of mind and a good family and, you know, all close friends, and these are all elements, huge parts of being so-called successful, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, here... I think some of those elements are forgotten because it's such a hyper-competitive society. 
you know. So it's, yeah. it's, I feel like the problems which are in modern society are accentuated here. So setting it here, it makes it more extreme, you know. Mm-hmm. That was one of the reasons I chose this setting. Okay, no, great. I say, especially with, yeah, like Silicon Valley, because it is, it's the forefront of pretty much technology in the Western world. You know, obviously, you've got the um, Hong Kong and China um, with all their technological advances, but Silicon Valley is where it's basically where it's at. You, you know, all the major Apple and everything is out there. So I can, I can really see how the pressures would be completely different. Uh, I can see a little bit down in London myself, because I say I'm a northern. Wales guy, I'm country boy, <laughs> so I'm actually originally from here, but I'm more of a country boy. So coming back to London, I can see the pressures from people down here as well, and the stresses that they have. Whereas there was a point where I was like that, and and part of the way that I personally have dealt with my anxiety and depression is because there's a competitive nature, and like you say, it's very competitive, very consumerism as well. With you've got to have the best, you know, go out there and make sure you've got to have the best for this for your family. Whereas in reality. It's like, I've been married 17 years, I've got an 11-year-old son, um, and I've got my own house on the coast of North Wales. You know, that's what is successful to me, is the fact that, you know, I've got, we've got that family, that's a success, is the family side of things. It doesn't matter about money, that comes and goes, but it's, it's those who are around you, um, and those who stay by you, and those who love you through it, and, and put, you know, and are there each moment, regardless of the high or the low, that, that's what success is. Which is exactly what your, you know, the, the valley does portray because that's the moral of the whole thing. I think it will put one of the morals in there. Yeah, that's what one of the, you know that was what kind of, I was trying to draw the whole uh, parallel with the curve, you know, because in the book, you know, he they they're always searching for this huge pot of gold, so to speak, and then in the end they throw away the mo- their most important most valuable thing which is their baby you know mm-hmm. for the searching while searching for that and uh so it's it's kind of and it turns out to be all meaningless so i was i i, I always loved that book so i kind of drew the parallel between the book you know or put i i tried to use that imagery in the in the movie you know mm-hmm. in various parts. definitely and i think there's one there's one line in there um it's not going to spoil it for anyone i don't think um but there's one line which hit me home because I, like we were talking about before when you when you know people in the restaurant and you're talking you're on your phone all the time i know because my son said something very similar he jokes that i was on my computer all the time um because doing what i do here i you know eight hours of the day in the office so it's me evenings for me i'm I'm busy writing to actors to direct you know to try and get people on my show so he's made a comment and the um it's maya isn't it the the one is it Maya? Yeah, it's yeah, Maya. So, yeah. Sorry, the name, <laughs> a day between watching it, my names are forgotten. It's Maya. She mentioned to him, I think it was at the horse stables, and he said, but you've got my mobile. And she's like, but I still can't reach you. And that line, that sank so much in me because it was like, that was, I think, such an important line which summarises the entire movie in one line. It's, I've got, yeah, I can contact you, I just can't reach you. And, and that really, really stuck out with me. Yeah, that scene was so sweet. No. Mm. It was. It was. It was very well done as well. The the the, the guy, you know, the, the actors and the actress there, they were they were, they were perfect on it as well. Um, because it was just so, and his his expression, Ali's expression after was just like, it was just spot on. It was like the realization of and confusion as well because he didn't really understand what she meant. Um, so it was it was, it was great. <laughs> No, but it also uh, shows how they're kind of two different wavelengths because mm. she's talking about how beautiful the moon bridge and so on looks, and he's talking about the facts, you know, that were given. Like, okay, what's the name, meaning of this word? Do you remember this fact? Yeah. And they're on two different wavelengths. It's the heart versus the head, you know. Mm-hmm. Exactly, yeah. and and that's an, another thing. And I, I do, I do know. Um, and again, my, a cultural thing to push the children to do well in a certain subject in a certain area um, when, they, when they're rather inclined to do something else. Like with Maya, she pushed into engineering, but she was actually, she was, an arti- you know, she was artistic, she was gifted at writing. Um, <laughs> I always joke. Especially in Asians, because there's only a few respectable, quote, respectable professions. Mm-hmm. You know, one is engineering, the other is medicine. I mean, those are the pinnacles of success considered. If you have any intelligence, you go into either engineering or you go into medicine. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's not true. I mean, friends, 
if you look at some of the great authors and novelists, they were, they were geniuses. I mean, you know, like Hemingway or, you know, these, these guys were geniuses, you know? So exactly. It's not... I think it was great. It was, I can't remember who quoted it, and I've seen it recently. It was everybody's a genius. If you measure the fishes of, if you measure the, um, I think it was. The, oh, I can't remember the, the mindset of a fish or the genius ability of a fish by climbing a tree. He's always going to be a failure. You've got to measure the. Ge- you've got to measure someone's abilities in their own special field and, and follow that field. I mean, I always joke and say, because when I was about eighteen, I used to follow drama and I wanted to go into acting myself, and my parents kind of. The best will in the world. I've got nothing, you know. Never hold anything against it for them. So, it's, but they kind of steered me to do languages and and something which I could fall back on and a more steady career choice, and uh, from going into something that they thought might not give me a, a solid career and, you know, and it, there'll be a lot of um, heartache and unemployment. They thought at the time, it's, as this usual type of thing when people think of that, you know, area. So I can relate. I related to that as well. Kind of getting steered into something more sensible rather than what my passion was. And now I'm finding 20 years later, I'm back in doing what you know, coming back in a circle to do to do kind of this kind of thing. Um, so it's yeah, and I have seen it because I've, I've got lots of Asian friends and I've seen it in their families, like you say, where the the children have been followed um, a certain path with the like you say the medical or the engineering, um, and it does go in that direction, and it's it does see you know that's the that's where the way they're getting pushed, so. Seeing someone like yourself being the director, um, it, you know, of a, of a movie director and stuff, is, is something that is very refreshing and very nice to see because you are following your artistic path. Um, have you found that difficult at all um, going into this sort of a path? I know it's so the line's a bit crackly there. That's all right. Um, it's, it is difficult because it's it's. I always say. Film is the most beautiful art form and the most terrible business. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> I mean, making movies like <laughs> incredible. Experience. I'll tell you. I mean, it's the creatively you're working with all these different disciplines, and everyone is creative. And it's there's a certain beauty to film. You can't. It's there's no parallel. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's every art form in one art form, right? It's it's writing, it's acting, it's it's cinematography, it's it's. Uh, Production design, you know, how things look. It's every single art form that yeah. you can imagine, right? But, you know, when it comes to the business side, and Mark can speak to this much better than I can, but <laughs> such a tough business. <laughs> yeah, it, it is, and uh, I totally agree with you. That that, that side of it is um, it's unique in its own way. Uh, it's, it's extremely cutthroat, as we know. Um, we do come across a lot of projects that have been shelved, for, for many years and they're fantastic should have been you know should have been had, uh, given opportunities to be seen um one of the reasons why we wanted to work with with the valley is not one because of the quality of the film because we do come the, the little gems and they're very few and far between because yeah. Yeah. these type of projects are are out there and they they struggle uh, uh, so I'll tell you, you know, um, trying to get them out there, trying to get them into the public eye mm-hmm. is, is no mean feat. It's extremely difficult uh, in, in many ways. There's a lot of barriers. So where we at Film Vault, we will work with pretty much anybody that wants to achieve that. And if we feel that we can do that, then we, we will do it. In that, you know, it's, it's extremely expensive. Um, it's... Are very time consuming and there are a lot of um can i say sharks in the water <laughs> <laughs> um i've said it but there are you know it, the the industry is rife with with different stories about you know bad stories good stories and, and what we're trying to achieve with this film is the quality of this film is, is there and and it, it deserves to be seen by by the public whether it's on the theatrical, whether it's on DVD, VOD, whichever, mm-hmm. or even on the telly. So that's that's one of the channels that we're, we're pursuing for the Valley as well, is that it's not just going to have a theatrical, it's not just going to be DVD, it's not going to just be VOD, it's going to have opportunities for TV networks and stuff like that, because it, it, it's of that quality that the TV networks are producing themselves, yeah. Um, yeah. which is great for us as a distributor, because 
you don't get that much you don't come across them very often um you know we may laugh and joke about some of the films that we see but you look at some of the stuff that's on telly at the moment and you you we all sit down and we all wonder why how on earth did it make it to do that <laughs> but it's there and you know um there are there are thousands and thousands of these films that go onto Netflix and Amazon and what have you, and you can you can you can turn onto Amazon now or Netflix now, and see a lot of A-list of stars doing films that you've never ever heard of, you know. And I think with with the Valley, it's right, it's spot on. It's not just the storyline. It's not just the um, what it's all about it's the cinematography of the film it's the the music the way that it's been put together it, it it's a it as we said it's a piece of art for for what's been done and for for me it's fantastic to have the opportunity to work with such a good film um and you, if you compare the genres that are out there at the moment you know it's 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 unique in its own way Dr- drama cov- drama as it as it falls into covers a wide range of elements um, but as we've said before this is one element that nobody really wants to talk about mm. however 99 percent of the audience uh, we're hoping will be able to say you know what i can take something from that from this film it sends a message but in a, in a way that you can relate to it um yeah. but going back to getting the films out there it's it has its ups and downs and you have to really work hard to make those channels work for, for people like Salah and any filmmaker um, and a lot of independent people for sure because uh, there are a lot of people who try and do it themselves and come across the big hurdles. You know, it's, it's about opening doorways and it's about making things work for, for people and I've been quite quite fortunate the last couple of films that I've worked with have been quite successful Um and you know, we we had Freezer, which went nobody would touch it for love or money, and we we did fifteen sellout cinemas, which which was fantastic. Um, and that moves on to VOD in a couple of weeks. Um, obviously, we met at the Landscape of Lies one. That's a completely different genre altogether. Yeah. But look yeah. at look at the barriers that that had mm-hmm. to just get to to, to last week. Sure, and we sure. didn't want this for the ballot. Really fortunate working with. Um, and he's doing the UK and the US. Yeah. So we're doing limited theatrical in UK and US, and then um, we have a we're we're also doing a limited theatrical in India. And again, yeah. we're hoping for similar things. We hope to follow that up with either you know a satellite or a streaming mm-hmm. deal. Brilliant. You know, because as you know, theatrical doesn't really pay the bills. So it's <laughs> more. Just marketing. Yeah. You know? And I think you're right. Like you say, with, yeah, like you say, with the Netflix and um, Amazon Prime and all the others that are out there, you know, I think it has. I mean, I've, said, I've spoken to a lot of actors about this kind of thing. In fact, I, I think it's an amazing thing for filmmakers like yourself and like Mark's just explained. One, you know, um, to distribute those in, in those formats because it's stuff that people want to see. Um, but with the major, you've got major networks in the UK, I know they are in the same in the US. Like we just mentioned, the stuff that they put on the real, all these reality shows. I've got screenwriter friends. Uh, I've got other directors, like you know, friends I've spoken to, and actors, and they're so talented. But they're they're finding it difficult to make it or to get anywhere in the industry because all people wanted to watch, or sorry, all the networks wanted to watch, uh, is just you know to put us on, not to watch, is to put across is reality because for them. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm not in the business. I'll say it's a cheap way for them to put it through rather than it's a cheap, you know, just get it out there, cheap format, push, it's out. It's a reality show. Wumph. We don't have to spend much, you know, that kind of, that's how I see it. Um, so apologies to any networks who might listen. <laughs> just write, <laughs> totally write me off now for that. <laughs> but, um, but that's how, but that, that's how I see it. And I, I, and when I talk to people, I, I can, I, you know, Netflix says so that's gone so huge. Amazon Prime, you know, um, Vimeo as well. These are all places now where you, you people like yourself can have these, have your work expressed and seen worldwide, um, which weren't available before. So I think it's a great time to be 
even though it's a difficult industry, and, um, and say I'm here's, here he's happily sitting in my little room, completely oblivious to the trouble and the hassles and the and the, and the stresses that you guys go through to to get a film to release. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do think from from a, you know that point of view, it's a great point, uh, a great time to be in for for. Um, Distributing and to having your your films seen and shown across the world, and to be shown in India as well, I'm sure it's going to be huge out there because of the subject matter. Because it's going, to, like you say, it's like, hit home with me. It's going to hit home with everyone who watches it. And I think in India, especially the cultural side of the film uh, and what that's portraying and what you've done there, I think it's probably there's so many people are going to probably sit there and it, it, they might stay in silence afterwards, but it might help them. Um, <clears throat> it might help them. Then I, 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 I wouldn't say he, it, or maybe heal, but it might help them understand and think they're not alone. You know, they're not. You know, they might be sitting there thinking that they're going to, they're alone. They're the only ones who are thinking, or they're the only ones going through this because of the culture that they they can't talk about it. And I think, yeah, I think it really will be a fantastic opportunity for people to 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 see it and then heal, and maybe heal through that through the characters on screen and see. This is what we need to do. Maybe, maybe if I just did this. Maybe if I talk to my friend, and you know, if I can't talk to my parents, I'll open up to my friend, and and it'll start those conversations going. Really, the whole the hope is that someone who's going through this will see. Hey, look, if I if I actually follow through, I'm going to destroy the lives of everybody I love or cared about, because that's essentially what happens in the movie. You know, mm-hmm. everyone that she touches, they they were irreparably damaged. You know? Yeah, and uh, so well, that was one of the things that brought us that drew us to the valley uh, was the powerfulness of the actual the message, um, and and we touched on it quite earlier on about how poignant the timing was for the release of a project like this, is because it's it's now starting to come into the limelight. It's now starting to come into the press, and you know Parliament are talking about it and. You know, uh, it, it, it's out there, and, and people are actually you now standing up and, like I say, championing it, and and people people's voices are now starting to be heard to a certain degree. So it, it's the right. You know what? This is a project. We're not frightened to to talk about it. We're not frightened to show it. You know, and get the people thinking and get the people reacting in, in the right way. To, to it and and and, the, and like I said, the message is powerful, um, and and it and it helps from the quality of the film because you, you, it's being combined together. Because um, some of the cinematography, and I've not ever said this to Sarah, some of the cinematography is absolutely fantastic. Um, the, especially the swimming pool bit for me was mm. beautifully filmed. Um, and and people will be able to enjoy the film for that reason as well for the, for the quality of the actual work that's gone into it and and I know she, I know it's it's a passion for 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 uh, and and I can see we can see why um, because when I show people the trailers and I show this when we started talking about this and I showed this, the trailers to the cinemas two or three four months ago now they were like I want it. I want it. When can I have it? And and that for me, you can take a trailer to the cinema sometimes, and they go, "Oh no, we'll, we'll think about it." But for that one, it was like, "When when's it coming out? When we have it? Yet? Let's get it, you know, let's get let's start getting things moving." And then bureaucracy took over, and it's like, "Oh, well, you have to wait until such and such before you can book it in." And then, but they've kept in contact. They'll, they'll email me every week saying, "Right, we can we can start doing it from this date, and we can start booking." So, you know, we know that the cinemas want it, which which is good for, for for all of us at the end of the day. Definitely, definitely. Like I say, the, the production, some of those sweeping land, you know, the sweeping shots coming in of the of the landscape, um, and and when he was on the, you know, when he was on the roadside at the very, even at the very beginning, you know, the the, the it was just brilliant. Like it's, it's artwork. Everyone's art forms have all come together, and I think they've they've delivered an absolutely gem of a film. They really have. Uh, and it's not being sycophantic, so sorry to say, but you know it's true. It's um, it is like Mark said, it is a gem of a film. It was something that it really touched me, and I think it is going to be huge. It's going to be a great successful film. The, the the production of it to me was no different to the production of of something you know one of these ones that you know Hollywood spew out all the time. It was very you know it was that's that's the quality for me. Um, 
and you know for an independent film that is absolutely fantastic and i think you know independent film for me is 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 I prefer them in a lot of ways because they, they you seem to draw into the characters more and you seem to the stories are more poignant like exactly you know the, the meaningful and the messages behind them rather than just like you know you can put all these explosions you can put all the the, the CGI as much as you want into a massive massive film which is great it's a great film they could, but you know to actually get drawn into um, films I find independent films I feel myself far more drawn into the character uh, and the characters in that film than I do in, you know, in something like, I'm not going to mention a film because I'll get sued. <laughs> Just to say it's a bad film, you know what I mean? Like one of the uh, late, one of the latest big blockbusters, for example, which is, is trivial. It's, it's, it's an action. It's a popcorn movie. These, these are meaningful messages. Hollywood movies, they use very formulaic characters and ideas. And, you know, they'll, they'll have good covers and they'll have script doctors and they'll alter things and, Whereas it's not really something, somebody's baby that they're taking care of, you know. Yeah. And independence, it's someone's dream and their brainchild and someone's looking after this. That's mm -hmm. why, so very heartfelt usually, you know. Yeah. Um, and that's what, so puts, that's what comes through. And that's one of the first things that we said when we started working with salaries. And, and we're, we're quite uniformed in that with what we say to everybody that we work with. It's, it's not our baby, it's their baby. It's their project and we're here to help them facilitate and get it out to the world. And because we're very, we're, we're trying to stay close and we have a conversation about what, what, what the filmmaker wants from the film rather than just saying, oh yeah, you know, we'll just do this with it and whatever. Yeah. It's, it's more, for me, it's more about the, the old school approach in that, you know, you, you're looking after somebody else's project here. And you've got to try and get the best for it. It's like it's like adopting a child, if you like, for instance, and you you you're responsible then, sort of thing. Um, but yeah, so again, as I said, it, it is a gem, and and that's one of the reasons. As soon as it crossed my desk, it was like, yeah, we, we, we want to work with that one, <laughs> you know, because because it was there. And you, you know. Some of the team that worked on it too. Um, Paul Paul Nordine, cinematographer. Um, Jacob Yaffe, the music, I mean, yeah. music was, I, I was, I cried when I first heard that Maya's theme, I call it Maya's theme, but that music, mm -hmm. I was like, it was so beautiful to me, mm. but um, so Robin Lee and some of the others who, and the, and the actors, Ali Khan and Suchitra Pillai, they gave it so much, yeah. they gave so much for their roles, I mean, there were scenes when we were shooting, we were literally, the crew was crying. I mean, we were so moved. I mean, we were, I was, there was one scene where I was just like, tears were just streaming. You know, I'm sitting there supposed to be direct. And I was, <laughs> it, it was, they were, they just gave a lot. And I, I would always appreciate everybody who worked on the movie. Excellent. Actually, I did have that question about that because the cast, you know, because of the, the, the depth of the movie and the topic of the movie, that was one of my, you've kind of, kind of answered that. In fact, how did the cast feel after shooting and during shooting? Because it, it must, it, it, like you say, it was, must have been such an emotional for them to go through that kind of thing themselves. And there's no way, even if you're an actor, and that's what you're paid to do, is play the part, uh, you know, it's, it's, that's still got to affect you. I think with Ali and Chitra, who are the leads, they're very, very you know, and um, I mean, they obviously they got they had to get into the zone, and it was it was it was it was hard, but they they could you know they were at the end of the day they could get out of it and so on. Mm -hmm. I was worried about the younger ones, like the person who played Maya. You know, I was I was really careful to talk to her. Like I said, okay, do you have a good support structure? Do you have good friends? Do you have and so she, you know, I she has a very, very stable home life, and mm -hmm. she's a very well-adjusted. Believe it or not, it's the opposite of the person, <laughs> the character. Um, she she doesn't, you know. So it, it really proves the power of acting because I mean, her, who she is as a person is totally different than the character she's playing. Yeah. And um, but she did a lot of research. I told her research depression, research well, how people think, how they mm -hmm. feel, how they, you know. And so she did a lot of research before the movie, you know, ever we ever started shooting, and so she was in the you know right zone, and she could get out of it afterwards. And I said, okay, after this, you know, you should take a vacation or something, you know, just get yourself out of this. <laughs> yeah. You have to get into. It. Yeah. And, and so she did. 
But I also want to say one thing before, you know, we run out of time is that it is a heavy topic, but I don't want people to feel like they're going to see like, you know, Bergman's, you know, <laughs> movie. It, it, there are, it is an engaging movie. Yes. I mean, it's elements of suspense and so on. So you're not, you know, sitting there, you know, for one and a half hours crying. For those. That's not what it is. No, no, not at all. What I say, think actually it's the British thing we all live live leads of live we all lead lives of quiet desperation. You know? I think it's more it's kind of captures that kind of gnawing pain that people live with. And mm -hmm. um and it's more like that than you know, a real tearjerker kind of move. Yeah, no, no, definitely. I mean, you say the suspense, and that was there as well. I will say that with when you're following Neil as he's going through that, you know, going through it all, and, and as the film comes to its climax, as it's going through the last, you know, half hour or so, you, you, you really are. It is a suspenseful film because you're like, what's going to happen? What's he going to find out? And you know, how, how's this going to react? And it does because I, you know, they, they say I was emotional at the end of it, but I, I was sat on the edge of my seat because I couldn't stop watching the film um, because it, it just it did drew, draw me in because it was very very engaging and I I wanted to find out what he was going to find you know, I wanted to find out where he was going to find out and how things would come to an end of, of, of like it did um, try not to spoil it that's, that's a stiff, so difficult talking about a film uh, without <laughs> blundering out there but yeah you're right and um, that's that is good and it's good to hear about the actors as well I mean I did an independent film last year I was in and I didn't know until I got there uh, I think I can't remember from Mark I've told you this I was given three pages of the script and that was the bit that I was talking about and it was when I got there they mentioned something to me and I, I yeah and the character was a, the most despicable type of human that I could ever think of being uh, and I didn't know because they, they, they didn't give me that bit of the script and I didn't find out till the day um, but again they, they, they came to me and asked me if I would li li like support on oh sounding like a R2-D2 here at the moment <laughs> I think my I think my the voice is gone. Voice is Can gone. you hear that or is it? Yeah. <laughs> Hang. Let me just... Uh... Is that better? Yeah. Yeah, that's better. Sorry about that. I sound like C-3PO. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Um, and yeah, so it was one of those where they, they like you said, with you did with Maya, they kind of came to me and I was just like, you know, it, it's fine. It's it's not the kind of person I want to, you know, I'd like to play, but it's it's just a role, it's not who I am. Um, so, yeah, I can understand that, and obviously I didn't have the in-depth of the, the time spent that these guys went through it. Um, but, it's, yeah, the, being a paedophile was not the nicest oh, yeah. character in the world. <laughs> about four days to rehearse, and most oh, really? of the actors stayed in my house. <laughs> okay. I mean, this is a, you know, we're an independent movie, we're trying to save the budget, right? But, <laughs> So we actually would rehearse sometimes till two or three in the morning after a shoot day of shooting. Mm -hmm. You know, the next day had a heavy scene in it or something, and uh, we so we had a lot. We had the benefit of good amount of rehearsal time, which because we shot the whole movie in twenty one days. Wow! And uh, and so we were when we were actually on location, the schedule was so tight. It was we didn't have a whole lot of time to do anything else. Yeah. Know? And so the fact that we had rehearsal before and sometimes during our days off we rehearsed, I think really benefited the movie. Definitely, definitely. I think, yeah, because like you say, it, it makes it more intense and, and you get to feel it more. And like you said before, be, you're all... Um, it's it's much more of a, a passionate movie. Um, and in 21 days, that's quite impressive considering the length of time some films take to go, you know. And, <laughs> So it is very, very good. Uh, but yeah, no, it, it does come across. And like I say, the the, the movie, the, the Valley, is such an engaging film. Um, I know I started out and talked obviously the, the subject matters, a heavy subject matter, but it's but the film makes it. Like you said, it, it's, you're not going to cry your eyes out the whole way through it like you do in some films, which you know they're just designed for that. This one's not. This one's designed to make you think, and I think that's the biggest difference. Is you. you I've come away from watching it last night, and all I've done all day is that. Um, obviously, I knew I was talking to you, so I was thinking of things to, to, to talk about. But it, I couldn't help but not think about it and think and just reminisce about, yeah, of where my personal experiences, due to things that I've had, have, have touched points in the movie. And and that I think is like we said, like you said before, that's what you, you like and you'd hope for people to be able to do is to is to think you know people are you're not alone in the situation. And uh, it, it definitely conveys everything 
uh, I think that you, 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 you said that you wanted to come out of it. For me, it conveys everything uh, in that respect. If that's the right <laughs> kind of words to say. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, anyway, as I will have to drag um, wrap this up from you, I'm afraid. Uh, so <laughs> it's been fantastic. Is there anything you'd like to say to people out there now, maybe people who are starting out? Because this is your first film, and a uh, hell of a first film, to be fair. <laughs> is there anything, anything, advice or anything you want to say to people? Uh, come out and watch the film. It's going to be in 26 screens in, in the UK. And uh, I hope uh, we get good feedback and come out and watch it.